you need more than emotional regulation to resolve your emotional eating. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist specializing in emotional eating. And I wanted to talk a little bit about emotional regulation. I think it's sort of a buzzword and, you know, we might think this is the missing piece to our emotional eating. And it is a piece of the puzzle, but we need more than just emotional regulation to resolve our emotional eating. So when I work with women, a lot of the times they have tried different things to help with their emotions. I've had one client that even tried doctor assisted psychedelics to help her process and remove trauma to get back to calm. And while it did help her, you know, release a lot of grief and trauma and sadness, it didn't help her resolve her emotional eating. So this means that we need more to help us with our emotional eating. And so that particular client went into these, um, this doctor assisted psychedelic treatment to particularly help her emotional eating. It wasn't just to release the grief. And so we need more than this. And when I'm working with women, and if I look back on my own journey, Sometimes we think there's one magic bullet to help us with our emotional eating. And if we just find it, we'll get there. But that's not the truth. We need a multi-layered approach to help us. And so I'm going to share with you what you need and also where emotional regulation comes into play. So emotional regulation is really when we're able to regulate our emotions, come back to calm, um, not sort of have these ups and downs in our moods. And this is really enticing because as emotional eaters, what we do when we feel distress, discomfort, upset, uncomfortable emotions, mood imbalance, we want to go to food to soothe us, to make us feel better, to cope, to regulate us. And so we've been using food as this band-aid. And so we want to get into emotional regulation. We want to regulate our emotions, but I wish it were so simple. So emotional eating is a coping mechanism and it's where we use food to soothe ourselves as this band-aid to help regulate ourselves. And this pattern would have formed in childhood. And because it formed so early, we didn't have our emotional needs met. We weren't, um, our parents or caregivers weren't able to help us regulate our emotions to move through discomfort and get to resolution and calm. And they didn't hold that um, nervous system for us to um, co-regulate with us and this would have left us with these uncomfortable emotions that we then needed food to help us with. In that process, we created this um, dysfunctional relationship to food and our body because we made this association that, of course, you know, we're emotionally eating, so we now need to control food because when we don't control food, it shows up and impacts our physical body. We don't get the love and the validation that we want if we don't look a certain way. And this impacts our body as well, because then we shame ourselves, we shame our body because we don't look the right way to get the love and validation that we're seeking. This is a pattern I see with clients. These three things are connected. And so there are layers here because when we restrict um, with the diet mentality, um, we start obsessing about food. And then when we shame our bodies, we start emotionally eating to, to deal with that shame. And so it becomes this sort of layered, um, situation. And so we need to move through each of these layers to remove the triggers. And so we need to have awareness of where did we go wrong with each of these layers? And so we need to move from usually we're in a diet restrictive mentality around food to truly nourishing our body and being able to discern truth from emotional hunger. This is going to help us notice when we're actually emotionally hungry. Sometimes we confuse emotional hunger with us restricting ourselves and then our brain is obsessing about food. And so we physically need food. If we were to do emotional regulation when we're restricting food, it's not going to be the solution. And this is why we need to learn to start nourishing our bodies, um, you know, optimizing our digestion and mood satisfying our hunger on all levels so that we're not thinking that when we're triggered into emotional eating or binging that something emotionally is going on. We need to sort of work with this in these layers. From here, when we're able to discern true from emotional hunger, we can start seeing where our triggers are. And it's the same thing around our body. As we're connecting back to our body, we want to see where we're in that shame spiral. Are we understanding our body? Are we 
giving ourselves the rituals and rhythms that we need. For instance, are we sleeping enough? If you're not sleeping enough, it impacts your hormones and it'll impact ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone the next day. And it'll make you want to eat more. So is that emotional eating or did you not sleep enough? So we have to work backwards. So it might be you didn't sleep enough. You don't have a good nighttime ritual, or maybe you have anxiety and worries. And then there's a deeper emotional reason as well. So we need to go through these layers you know, there are other triggers towards our body. And so if we don't feel good in our body, that shame triggers emotional eating. Is this shame coming from how we value ourselves, our self-worth? We need to go deeper here. And that's where emotional regulation would come into play. But if we're not sleeping enough, that's not about emotional regulation. And then finally, when we do know our emotional triggers, we can have emotional regulation. But not just to make emotions go away. We want to dive deeper with them. We want to process and integrate them on a body level, on a somatic level, because a lot of these triggers that are coming up are old emotions that are traumas, unresolved emotions that are living within us. And so we need to really integrate and process them on a body level, meet our true needs. And when we meet our true needs, which are at first emotional needs, and we might have additional needs in terms of setting boundaries, et cetera, food can no longer fill that hole. When we actually get what we need, food cannot meet that. And so this is where we can start regulating our emotions. When we meet our true needs, we process and integrate, that's going to create emotional regulation. And so we need to go through all of these layers when we have emotional eating. Otherwise, whenever we wouldn't be able to be aware of when our emotions are coming up and why they're coming up. And with emotions, with mood impacting mood, there are several factors to that. It can be nutritional, physical, and then of course, emotional, truly emotional. So we need to be able to discern this. Otherwise, we might be trying to do emotional regulation when we need to drink water or we need to sleep more. We need to look at all of these factors. So in order to start on your journey to getting to emotional regulation, to resolving your emotional eating, um, the first step I give to clients is to start learning to discern truth from emotional hunger. And I have a free guide called What Are You Truly Hungry For? And so you can download that below. This is the guide that and the lesson that I give to all paid clients, we need to really learn to discern this. And so that guide is going to give you how to discern truth from emotional hunger and to start catching your triggers. If you are ready to resolve your emotional eating, you want that support and guidance, the step-by-step process and the deeper tools, then I'd love to invite you to find out more about the Emotional Eating Evolution Program. This is my 12-week container with all of the support, the process, and the in-depth tools to help you navigate this pattern so you can go from you know feeling out of control with food feeling like you're obsessing about food all the time to ease and confidence around food and in your body in a sustainable way so you can find out more about that below so if you have any questions about what i've shared with you today please let me know please be sure to like and subscribe and i look forward to sharing more with you and i hope you have a great day Mm -hmm.